Hi, everybody. I have a really fun interview today. I've got two of my all-time favorites, truly all-time favorites. Uh, Tamara Braun is here and Emily O'Brien, who are causing so much trouble in Salem right now on Days of Our Lives. Uh, I don't know what we do without them. They're literally stirring the pot for all <laughs> so many of characters. Emily O'Brien, Tamara Braun. So how are you guys? And um, getting through everything with COVID and staying safe and how are you? I'm good. I feel good. I feel really grateful to be over at Days, speaking of COVID, um, because they are super, super careful and cautious and we're getting tested all, all the time and the protocols are really strict and I, I actually really, really appreciate that. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful because, you know, so many people aren't working and not able to because of what's going on. My sister does costumes um, and she is currently doing a movie for a very, very, very big network and they're not even as stringent as we've been. So I feel very fortunate, you know, just having the comfort you come in, sometimes you get two tests in the mornings. Um, and even if you're clear and you're, you're, you're able to come in, we're still masked. We still have to have six feet of distance. So the, it's, uh, right now I feel like it's probably for me the safest place I can be other than my home. Mm -hmm. So I feel very fortunate, yeah, uh, to be working right now since September is wonderful. Very fortunate to be working. There's so many people obviously that aren't and are suffering through this pandemic. Yeah. I hear that you can't, um, a lot of the other shows, you can't um, rehearse scenes together in your dressing room, right? You have to yeah. do it virtually over the phone. Like, how do you guys rehearse <laughs> your scenes? Yeah, we're on the phone or on FaceTime or Teams app. Um, that's the only way we can do it. And sometimes the Wi-Fi isn't cooperative. So sometimes it's it's just on the set. <laughs> you know, we're trying to do everything we can do. But um, but you know, I'd say, I don't know, how's yours been, Emily? Like I I I'd say like 85% of the time I can get somebody somehow. Yeah. And and for the others, it's it is over the phone. But the the thing for me, like, you know. I'm relatively new to the show and I was just starting to get to know people and get to like build friendships on a more personal level. And then bam, this happened and we're all so separate now. I mean, I'm in, in a completely different makeup room even. So- Oh, you're in the far one? You're in the one like yeah. three miles away, me too. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. So like, I don't get to see Armando and Elizabeth and I I, I saw them like, oh my God, I forgot. Like, I don't see you anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I just kind of miss that camaraderie of like being able to chat in the hall and, you know, rehearsing in person really changes everything. I definitely feel like I'm on my toes more trying to figure everything out while on stage and not having blocking. It's difficult, but you know, we're all making it work. Yeah. Tamara, when you got the call or, or to come back to Days as Ava, mm -hmm. in your head, were you like, now, how are they going to make her alive? How is this going to work out? Or were you like, everybody comes back to Days alive? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, when Albert, uh, five years ago, when Ava, or we thought, <laughs> you know, she, he called to let me know. And I was like, you're killing me. He's like, she's been so bad. We have to. And I was like, oh, he goes, come on. Nobody's ever dead in daytime. And that's what he said to me. So I was like, okay, well, maybe, you know. Um, but yeah, my, my neighbor across the street, June, she watches both uh, Days and General Hospital. And um, she said, you know, oh, by the way, there's all these people coming back. They've been like held in some crypt or something. And there's <laughs> initials on the door and we saw AV, maybe that's you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and I was like, well, I'm on another show right now. So I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. But um, so when I did get the call, I was like, oh, she must've been behind that door, AV. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm always I'm happy to go back. You know, everyone, I love everyone at Dave. It's just such a wonderful set to work on. So I was excited and I love Ava. So. Well, Ava's such an amazing character and you won a daytime Emmy, your first daytime Emmy for playing her. I which did. must be nice to like get to come back and step into those. Yeah, it's so fun mm -hmm. just to see like, you know, what she's been up to and what kind of trouble she's gonna cause. <laughs> Emily, I'm watching you on this show and it is the, I, I cannot wait to see 
every scene you're in because literally you're tearing up the material because when I saw the scene with you and Dr. Rolf and with you and William Ute, who's so much fun to work with, I'm assuming when you did that j prison scene, you come to visit him and we first learned you're something really off kilter with her or she has such a huge vendetta. You know, we, it, it was like a turn. Like you saw, we got a reveal that this girl is out for blood or twisted. Mm -hmm. um, what did you think of those scenes? And did you know Gwen was gonna be like this when you signed on? Uh, no, no idea. <laughs> I knew nothing. The, the only thing I knew was that she was with Jake uh, and she was a bit of a bad girl. I didn't know anything besides that. Um, so now that I have this information, I will just say that I think every villain or every bad person, whatever you want to call them, has a reason. You know, you don't just have evil spewing out of you out of nowhere. So I think the audience is going to discover soon where this is coming from. It's probably time that this wraps up. <laughs> <laughs> it's been yes, months. Yes. I think big things come out around New Year's and things are going to start revealing themselves, I believe. Yeah, that, yes. Yeah, maybe a little bit after that. A little bit after that. Yeah. Uh, when you it's found out what it was, what what did you think? Did it all make sense to you now as an actress, like what you were playing? Because they, they, how much can they tell you about what you're playing? You know, I swear they leave me breadcrumbs. I'm always asking, like, wh wh why, what, what's this, and what, what's motivating her to to do this, and why is she saying this? And Albert will be like, "There you go, okay, there you go. There's a there's a little tidbit," and it just leaves me going, "Okay, so that's going to go in this direction now." Um, but now that I know what happens and where she comes from and what her motives are. I think, I don't know how much I can share, but personally, I, I felt sorry for Gwen. I don't want to say sorry for her, but felt you see, her. I felt for her and you just see that she is a human. And I think that there are people that may even be able to empathize. So uh, curious to know how it all plays out. It's going to be a very different side to her. <laughs> well, now, speaking of that, um, Tamara, when you play Ava, I mean, she's this mob, you know, mob, doll, mob mall, whatever they you know, <laughs> originally, but you have to find, for you to play her, you have to find her deep pain as well, I would assume. Well, she has a lot of deep pain. I mean, in that first incarnation of Ava, when she first came on the scene, I mean, we found out that, uh, you know, her, her father was not a very good father. And, um, he had taken away the love of her life um, at the altar, you know, left her standing there. And it's, it's, we find out that dad had his goons take him away. And, um, and then he was drugging her <laughs> so she couldn't, so she wouldn't remember that. Goodness. He had, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, <It's> yeah. That. <laughs> yes, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> she was being drugged by a psychiatrist who was making her think she was crazy, but it was really the drugs. Um, so she was having a psychological break because he didn't want, daddy didn't want uh, Ava to remember that she saw daddy kill mommy. So yeah, big. So, you know, just, you know, little, little things. <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys the easy stuff. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, where do you, you begin know, with that? But it's so, it's so fun, you know, and it's so weird. I was like, oh, and she was being locked up and held in a compound, like she couldn't get out, right? And I thought, oh, this is crazy. And I remember I said, oh yeah, I'm working on a new show. I said, and this is the story I told my, my neighbor. And she goes, I said, you know, typical crazy soap couldn't happen. And she said, oh no, there's this, um, in Austria, there's this woman who's been kept in like, uh, like a, I don't know, I don't remember what it was, like a cell or something like that for 14 years. And she's been being drugged and I was like, Maybe they read that story and created Ava. <laughs> Inspiration. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. Oh but yeah, gosh. you know, you've got to find, you know, I think, I think people who do bad things, I mean, most of them, if they're not just, you know, if there's not something really, really off and it comes from damage, you know, it comes from trauma, you know, something breaks inside a human being when they're traumatized, you know, and over and over and over again. Um, and all depending on the kind of 
person you are and constitution you have and mental capacity, you know, to be able to put things in place um, is how you're going to respond in life as you move through it. And some people can manage and other people break. And Ava is definitely someone who broke, so. You know, Emily, you played Jan and Weinar so beautifully over the years. You know, it was it was just great. And she was a little off kilter as well. You think? Just a little you know, bit? She had like brain tumors and then there wasn't a brain tumor and there was another brain, you know, just trying to follow the trajectory of that. Mm-hmm. Why do you think you play these kind of characters so well? Because I'm watching you do Gwen years later and she's like unhinged in her own way and you're able to tap into it. So I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe I'm unhinged in real life. Uh, <laughs> aren't we all? A little? Aren't we all? Yeah. I was going to yeah. say, aren't we all? Yeah. yeah. I think we all are in our own way. Yeah. I don't know. It's really bizarre. I feel most comfortable when I'm playing somebody that's off kilter rather than if I have to be a beautiful, perfect ingenue type. That's so much pressure on me. And I don't feel like I quite fit that mold. And so this being being um, the, the, the one who's always the odd one out, something about that, I just feel there's so much to explore and it's easier for me. I don't know. Or I'm <laughs> just a, a weirdo. Of, yeah. But, and Tamara, that's kind of true. I mean, you've played the gamut on daytime. Mm-hmm. You really, you, with the different roles you've played. Mm-hmm. But is this kind of, this, is this the most fun? It's yeah. <laughs> Ava Ava has been my favorite character for for the opportunity of levels that she has, you know? Um she really I mean she really she there's just so much there's so there's so much when you're given a character that has so much baggage. Do you know? Um that you can explore and they've been great in, you know, allowing me when I've, you know, come and played her to explore those things. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy and fast right now. So we don't have time to, to play, you know, it's one take wonder. (laughs) Viewers just learned, we just saw that Charlie is her son. We just (laughs) learned that on air. Did you, you didn't, did you know that at any point or just like, did you know much ahead of that script? Well, I, I knew when I came back. Okay, so they had a story, right. That I was gonna have another son, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, where did he come from? <laughs> so, yeah, how do you explain that? Um, yes, how do you explain that? have actually explained it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but afterwards, we can talk, <laughs> but. Okay, um, yes. Has it been explained on TV yet, or no? No, okay. I mean, we don't know whose son, yeah. I don't think we know the bio father. Okay. We don't know that part. We don't know that part yet. Yeah. We know that there. We know that she's got two sons now. That is correct. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. And then it was also interesting that they, when they brought you back, you're you've got this hold on on uh, Philip. They put you in with Philip, which is a weird, like not weird, but like out of kind of the blue. Well, you know, he was he he he's uh, lost a lot of money gambling and so he he's gonna use that to the Vitalis, and so we took care of him and now he's got to take care of us <laughs> you know what do you think of working with uh, katie mclean and marcy miller and billy flynn like you kind of caused trouble for everybody and how have they been to you and and what's your favorite do you have any favorite moments that you've done with them um Yeah, it's, I mean, everyone's been so wonderful and welcoming to me. It's been a year now, over a year I've been on the show. I mean, if you don't, you know, there's the pandemic in between there. (laughs) You know, that little tidbit of time. Um, But for a favorite scene, I think instantly my mind goes to the scene where it was Matt um, and uh, um, Missy before. Uh, and I'll get to with the scene with Katie. Um, 
where I kind of barge into the room and I'm drunk and I grab their expensive bottle of wine and I'm in a robe and they look at me like this thunderstorm coming in and destroying their evening. We couldn't even get through it without laughing with every take. It was so good. And their reactions to my psychoness. <laughs> um, and then I had a scene with uh, Matt and Katie that actually hasn't aired yet, but it was so special to me because um off camera, they were both very, they were so invested in what was happening and they were really nurturing. And I, 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 I felt so comfortable, like we could just do anything and, and I knew that they would catch me. Um, I wish I could talk about it more because I- I actually I think it. I had in recently interviewed Katie and she said she wouldn't say the scene or with who, but I believe it's this scene because she said, this actress I worked with, da, 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 da. But, but, you know, so I think there's a mutual admiration there with what that scene was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that yeah, might be it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Tamara, also, I talked to Stephen Nichols yesterday and I said, oh, what do you think of working Tamara? He goes, oh my God, <laughs> I love Tamara. She is one of the most incredible actresses I've ever worked with. Yeah. And how is it working back with him? You and really are. You are. You, are yeah. you really are. Just you, like I've been watching you. You're such a like a suave, sexy vixen. But then at the same time, I told you this in the hall. Like, yeah, we got to run into each other in the hall. Yeah. <laughs> and for a very brief moment, you know, Two seconds, I was before like, oh they God. separate you. <laughs> but I watch you, and you know, they say action and all of a sudden you can just tap into this place where you're so emotional. I'm watching like, I, it takes me so much work to get to that place. So yeah. I just loved watching those scenes. Oh, I don't know if those have aired yet. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it's okay, but it does, I mean, you didn't that's say okay. it. That's okay, but that's okay. exciting things to come. Which yeah, okay. it, yeah, no, 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 but thank you so much. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I don't remember. Oh, Steve. Yeah. Even and Mary Beth, Stephen was like, kudos to you. I just want to know about working with him. And then, you know, you come in and destroy Kayla and <laughs> you're always like- Oh, oh those, those scenes aired, yes, right? Where it's, okay, yes. Like in the t-shirt or in the in Steve's shirt. And I'll, hey, Kayla, you look like hell. <laughs> I mean, those were, that was a great, that was a great day. Those lines were so fun and funny. Um, but, oh my gosh. I love them. I love those two human beings so much. I mean, Emily, the way you were talking about when you worked with um, with um, Matt and and um, Katie that day. I mean, it's like when you know people have your best interest at heart, and you're all in it together, and you're there yeah. wanting each person to be their best. And, and you know, like to me, that's what this is about. You know, acting yeah. isn't a solo sport, it is a team sport. Yes. And I mean, some people don't see it that way, which blows my mind. Which I wanna say, yeah, cause I've talked to many actors over the course of decades that have done this and you know, a lot of them are saying the same thing. Like, you know, you don't wanna be in somebody who's trying to one up you, no. you know, you wanna be with somebody who's, you know, in the scene to win the scene. Challenging, right. you know, like yeah. they're with you. It's like a dance. It's like a flow, you know, if somebody throws or I don't know, like it's, you're supposed to, you're supposed, in my opinion, and you know, you're supposed to be in it together, you know, yeah. listening and, and, you know, being surprised at something someone does and, and, you know, not having things planned out. But anyway, I mean, like, so to work with Mary Beth and Steven, I just, like I said, I adore them as human beings. And when we get to work together, it's just a joyful, it's a joyful day for me. You know, I love them. They're and did, did you get to see James Lastovic? So yeah. I saw him on screen, but you know, we're not allowed to go up and say hi or anything. And I was like, oh. So I actually left him a little note under the door when I saw him on screen, just saying how nice it was to see him. I mean, it's been five years. So. Five years, you're like my murderer. <laughs> My murder, but but he was such a sweet. I mean, like I had forgotten somebody posted um, a, a little clip from us back then, and I had forgotten these scenes because you know, like life goes on, and it was such a it was so wonderful to watch, and he was so young. Did I mean, you it seduce him. I <laughs> she's this is Emily. It was she seduced him. Well, not really. <laughs> I mean, she, she led him 
him on. <laughs> okay. But she didn't let okay. him on. Yeah. Let him on. Yeah. She didn't. <laughs> She didn't actually seduce him. Nothing happened, thank goodness, because Tamara would have had a really hard time doing those <laughs> scenes. But, um, but yes, I mean, she definitely let him on <laughs> to get what she wanted. And Emily, was- I, I, I know. So Emily, I remember when you said to Dr. When she says to Dr. Ralph, I want to fry her brain. Didn't you want to fry <laughs> <laughs> for Abigail's brain? When you said, so when you say that, <laughs> Do you have yes. the labs at first with them or do you just? Yeah, you know, Fryer, you're just thinking of like a cast iron skillet, putting yeah. her brain in it and just giving it a good sizzle, right? Um, I was just like. <gasps> yeah, you, you say that you too. Just, Dr. Yeah. Rolf, she said it to Dr. Rolf. She went to visit him in prison. I think multiple times I said it too. <laughs> and once you get past like the second time, you just kind of go, okay, this is her reality. She wants to fry her brain. So <laughs> you better make this sound natural. <laughs> yeah. I think I think that if Ava and Gwen teamed up, just thinking how I can, I'm literally saying they have to at some point intersect them to a point where they have a diabolical plot to bring down everyone and say oh, I would love yeah. that like yeah. I would love to see two power women who like know what they want are betrayed like go after it and they team up and I was thinking you know in my head no you got story you got storyline plot points and a storyline and I would put them together and literally have them wreak havoc on the town send you pitch your ideas to the team (laughs) it would be so much fun yeah you've never you've (laughs) never had a scene together correct no so you're really islanded you don't really like you said you on top of covid you don't really you don't intersect in stories at all so you really never i mean there are honestly there are some actors that i have not even crossed uh even even before the pandemic, because I was so far removed from their story, um, but now even more so. So yeah, we're all kind of in our separate bubbles. Right, which goes back to what you're saying, like with, with um, cause hair and makeup is where you would see people that you don't have yeah. scenes with, or, and that's where you might get to know them a little bit or in the yeah. hall or maybe at lunch or something, but. Yeah, and I was just beginning to, and then that just got <laughs> taken away. <laughs> But it'll, I believe it'll, it'll happen again. It'll come again. I hope. Let's hope. Knock on wood. Yeah. Or we'll all have to like get together and know each other through like Zooms like this or something. Yeah. Because I was excited. That's the only way, only way you can do anything. Yeah. This, I kind of. Well, and I thank you, Michael, because I was excited because I don't know Emily. We stopped and saw each other in the hall and I had seen um, a scene that she had done and I wanted to compliment her on it because she's so good. And then, um, and then. I mean, really, like we had what twenty seconds, thirty Not seconds, even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, yeah, right. Yeah. I'm being generous with that, and then it's like, well, like what I said. What's why I want to bring you together? It's like you two are really kind of catalysts on daytime right now. It's fun when you guys each come on the screen. There's stuff happening, and I think we're at a time. You know, I think daytime has to move. You know, it's, it, it's a very hard when you're in the time that we're in, where it's fast food. People want fast content, content, content. Get to the next. Get to the next. And if, and if you don't have things that are moving things along, I think it, it feels a little stale. And I mm-hmm. feel like when you come on, it's like exciting. Um, Tamara, what about Lucas Adams and seeing him again and your, your trip? And <laughs> Well, you, you know that I had never met him except on the carpet with you. You're like, I think, did, wasn't it you who said this is, you grabbed, grabbed somebody to say, hey, this is your son. Was it you? Yeah. I don't know, was it? Maybe not, because I had never worked with him before. Right. Um, and I was on the carpet uh, for the Emmys a couple of years ago, and um, maybe three years ago. And um, somebody's like, this is your son. I thought it was you, maybe it wasn't, but- um, Maybe it was. <laughs> <laughs> but I had so seen him again. This is like, that was the only time I, I knew him or met him for two seconds. I was like, well, hello, son. But um, he's just a doll. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, we. Emily, don't you think we work with really nice people? <laughs> Everybody has been lovely. Honestly, I feel very lucky. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And how's Brandon Barash been to you? Emily? Oh God, <laughs> that old jerk. <laughs> yeah. He's great. He, you know, he's another one. I, 
we we get these tiny scenes together where he we just you know are like <sighs> to each other um and we had a scene recently and we're like gosh i i you know we miss working with each other because it's just so fun he'll he'll throw something at me and then i'll throw it right back at him he's always ready to play um so he makes the job easy yeah he's he's great i have really <laughs> played about how chad has women coming up to him and kissing him at the most inopportune time when somebody else can, you know, see it that shouldn't. And yeah. one seems to be a real instigator in that. She seems to have the right timing. Yeah, she certainly does. <laughs> she's, she's, she's planned it all out. She's on phase two of her, her plan. So she's gonna make sure that she can coax him into the right uh, place. She makes sure that they're both standing under the mistletoe. Yes, I saw that in the room today. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. Green, that beautiful green top, too. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. So in, a, in a broad stroke, Tamara, without giving away, what would you say the fans should look forward to from Ava? What, what do you think we're going to, as we go through the holiday into the new year, are we going to be, what do you think? Is she going to mm -hmm. be pulling more strings? Is she going to be trying to help her sons? Is she gonna want to get rid of Kayla? Like what? <laughs> I think she's gonna be a little tied up, and you're gonna. That's have right. To there you go. She'll be, tied up. <laughs> She'll be tied up for the holidays. Okay. She's gonna be tied up for the holidays. <laughs> tied up for the holidays. <laughs> and Emily, what can you say? I think you're to expect to see everything crumble, Aww. and uh, for the truth to come out, and what what kind of repercussions uh, that has. And, and I think you'll see, I think you'll empathize, like I said. I think that you're just gonna see a, a, a very real Gwen. No more putting on faces and, you know, putting on this chipper nanny who's doing everything right and being your best friend. You're gonna just see who she really is, which I look forward to. All right, ladies, well, thank you so much for your time. And I want to wish both of you a happy holiday and a happy new year. And I hope that we will all get to see each other in person in 2021. Yes, let's hope. No point. Yeah. And um, please stay safe. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've loved your performances. And I know the fans are, are really into it as well. So bravo. Okay. God, thank thanks you. for doing this. It's fun. Yeah, right. it was. It was so much fun. <laughs> Bye, Emily. Bye. 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 Bye, Michael. See you next year. <laughs>